So, development hell, a term in the gaming industry that is essentially the literary equivalent of constipation. Sometimes shit just refuses to come out or just takes way longer than it should. That's just the nature of the industry sometimes, development can get caught up in itself for so many different reasons. That being said, the term usually applies to the big AAA stuff where expectations and pressure are wildly heightened, nudging more and more hotshot developers to meet that deadline so when a game does get pushed back, it's often heavy hitting news. These studios have budgets, they can afford to treat their devs like garbage. Indie dev studios, on the other hand, are a totally different story. Passion and creativity are usually at the forefront of the priorities list. It doesn't matter if the game needs a little more time for polish or reworking, indie devs have the luxury to take things at their own pace. Even if it's a Five Nights at Freddy's fan game that takes over two years to develop. Dawn Metabus, this is one elusive little fan game. Originally hyped up way back in the days of FNAF 4, it was stuck in development hell for seemingly ages, before finally dropping out of nowhere on February 26th, 2018 on GameJolt.com. But that being said though, this thing reeks of that older twang fan games were met with back in the early days of FNAF fan content, and at least to me, that's what makes this thing so intriguing. I mean, from the game page alone, it, it, I, I, I don't know, man. It's hard to ignore how jank the animatronic models here look with the stretched UVs and the questionable design elements. But honestly, I'm kind of interested to dive deep into this wacky little executable. I'm guessing from the description alone, this thing takes place after Fazbear Fright burns down in FNAF 3, acting as some kind of fan sequel. Didn't you just burn to death in that godforsaken horror direction? And personally, hey, I'm way too awesome. I don't know though, it really feels like I need that extra something to really push me into trying this thing out. Oh, y'all got mutant onion on the menu? Yeah, of course I'm sold. So it passed the typical warning screen and we're met with a 4x3 aspect ratio monitor and film grain. I'm already not a huge fan of the fact that there's a tutorial section here. It just feels a little off-putting to me for a Five Nights at Freddy's fan game to literally dedicate itself to explaining the way the mechanics in the most static way possible. Finding a more inventive or imaginative method of teaching the player how to do shit here would have been way more immersive. At least throwing a couple fun calls or something. I think a good example would definitely be Pop Goes. While I do think the fun calls wager a little too much on the player interpreting what can be some pretty vague dialogue, that game's phone guy does throw about how the animatronics interact with patrons and their environment during the day, directly tying into their own respective game mechanics. Here, yeah, if you hear a sneeze of precisely 17 decibels, that's when you got a duck and cover. See, it says it right here. Getting into the game itself, 12 nights earlier? Okay, goddamn, I I knew this game was a little longer than most, but this is literally more than double the main game content of most core FNAF entries. God, seven hours a night too. Games like Five Nights at Candy's 3 are infamous for padding out the gameplay a tad too much, but unless the variation in mechanics here can make up for it, this isn't the best quality indicator. Simply having more nights doesn't automatically make your fan game any better. But at least in Candy's 3, the visuals were really pretty. From the main night segments, to the deepscape, to the post-night minigames, there was a lot of polish to it all, and that's an element fairly consistent with each of the Candies games. Here, everything looks like the bump map was ramped up to max capacity. Oh look, termite infested chairs, that's so sexy! Dormitabus looks like most games in their alpha stage, honestly pretty visually similar to Minecraft of all things, that exaggerated bump mapping holding a striking resemblance to the harsher textures of cobblestone and netherrack. At least that game's running system doesn't give me a migraine though, god, you gotta run underneath the table here to access your monitor, and I feel like they were trying to go for something similar to the running animation of FNAF 4, but you black out every other frame here, and boy howdy is it super goddamn disorienting. Even when you reach the monitor using the thing's a nightmare, you gotta open and minimize the map in order to view the camera you've selected, which does nothing but get in the way of what I wanna see, man. It genuinely feels like the system works this way purely to differentiate from the perfectly functional established map system 99.9% .9 of other fan games are totally content with using. Again, like any of the games from the Five Nights of yeah, these franchise, they're some of the most popular pieces of Freddy's fan content out there, and the first two games both feature that classic camera system, same with any number of the most well-known fan games, Flumpty's Pop Goes Candies, it's consistent and only ever slightly tweaked, cause at its core, it just works well. I mean, a game like Minecraft works in a similar way, holding a map takes up a good portion of the screen, but in the context of a paced sandbox where you're not hyper-focused on a small ass aspect ratio, yeah, it works. Door Midibus doesn't seem to get that though. This isn't the only fan game guilty of this, but that doesn't make it less like trying to take a piss in an elevator. What, you haven't tried it? Well, as for gameplay here, it's nothing too crazy. Uh, you're fending off a variety of undead enemies that'll spawn a good length away from you, edging closer and closer unless you defend your station. Pretty similar to most FNAF fan games, and again, 
Not unlike Minecraft, where being swarmed by enemies at night is a common occurrence for those playing on easy difficulty up. I like to think that game definitely handles enemy encounters far better though, ironically with Dormedible's core game mechanic based on defense, I feel like Minecraft's approach to swinging your diamond sword at enemies is just so much more satisfying, especially with the semi-recent combat updates released on February 29th, 2016, only two years and a day shy of the release date of these Dormedibles. Dong Piss isn't the only fan game guilty of this, but that doesn't make it less it's like trying to take a piss in an elevator. You ever think about how camels can store piss in their humps? Like, like if they really wanted to. But anyway, I'm getting off topic. See, Minecraft isn't the only sandbox game to feature a combat system. I definitely think the forest is another great example of how to bash someone's nuts in. But like, Minecraft's just a little bit cringe, in it. Like, you ever think about how stupid it is that the spiders in this game are bigger than my fat ass? They are like, as big as sodding humans, bruv. Like, you ever think about how humans could be like spiders if we had eight legs, like two arms on each side, two legs on each side, you just convert them all to legs and it's like, <laughs> it's like human spiders, which couldn't really exist if you really think about it. Um, but on the topic of this, uh, did you know most spiders are gay? I'm, I'm serious, look it up. I, wait, no, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm not gay. Bro, I'm, I'm, I'm not gay. It's, it, it's a fact. It, it's real shit. I'm, I'm totally not gay. Why, why, why would you even bring that up? Look, I'm, I'm not being defensive. You're being defensive. But you know what sucks, my fat donkey doo doo hole more than Minecraft? Yeah, that's right. Fool guys. You realize Eminem's being released in 1941 is pretty similar to how Hall Metaverse was released in 2017. I think those two facts are pretty similar, and I'm not sure why this wasn't referenced in the game. So, heavy tits is what they should call Fall Guys, because it blows. This <laughs> bean game is so hard to comprehend. It's a load of dookie asshole. This game really went downhill when the game decided to cross over with a munchus of all games. Unbelievable. One of the most ambitious games of 2025 and they ruin it. I'd rather let the little homunculus in my dungeon play this. <laughs> At least he'd get excited like he does when I feed him my dinner scraps. <laughs> Boy howdy, I'm tired of this dang old game. Why don't we move on to a game that's a little more my style. You all heard of Friday Night Funkin'? It's a little game created by Newgrounds creator Toby Fox. With music by frickin' Picasso of all people. Unbelievable cast already and a waste of talent. If the visuals look familiar, then you've guessed correctly. They hired Mr. Renter to do the backgrounds and character art. You'd think the cancel culture would have gotten to him already, but no. I mean, after all, he is the kind of person to put pronouns in bio. <laughs> yeah, the music in this game infuriates me. Why do they just keep talking? And why isn't it a little more realistic? If I was at a funeral and had to give my wishes... <laughs> if I was at a funeral and had to give my wishes, would I really go up and go, Be Bo Bob? Yeah, right. Maybe to those SJWs I would. I, I mean, not in a gay way. I, I'm... I, I mean, I, I, maybe I kinda am. Now, if you want an actual good game, boy do I have the one for you. It's a little indie game called Glue Chugging Simulator, created by the ever infamous Steel Wall Games. In order to fill that void for the cringe fest that is FNAF, they created this little filler game to really fill in that void. Now what makes this game a sea urchin in the sand? Well, it's a matter of style. The way the main character schlops his nose into the nozzle of the glue bottle really captivates what it means to be frickin' stupid. Another highlight of this magnificent game would have to be the soundtrack and how absolutely massive this character's schlong is. I think the use of piss trickling into the water as the music was a great addition and really catches the perfect energy needed to create a glue chugging experience. Unlike <laughs> Toby Fox, who can't even get paint chugging right, Steel Wool has a real good thing going here. I wish the best for them and their future in glue chugging experiences. <coughs> <coughs> I think I bucked out for a second there. Dormitibus is a fan game that exists. April Fool's question mark? I don't know, April Fool's fellow shit slingers.